Hello, good evening. It's 10 p.m. in Accra on New Year's Day. This is News at 10 on TV3 and 3FM 92.7. We're live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. And you can follow our live stream on the internet at 3news.com and on our Facebook page as well. Let's start with the day's major news highlights. President Nana Ekufuado, Adodanko Ekufuado has urged Ghanaians to work harder and support government to ensure development. The president joined congregants at the Accra Ridge Church for the watch night service to usher in the new year. And the transition to usher in the new year 2018 was watched by many, including vigils by the Christian community at various watch night services in various churches. For many, it was a holy occasion to renew relationships with Jesus Christ and revise resolutions to face the challenges of the coming year. On the Coalition of Eastern Corridor, youth in the northern region have called on the Kingdom of Dagbong to accept the decision for a new region. At a demonstration, the group said the creation of the new region will open up the area and attract businesses. And on the international front, 12 people have been killed overnight in anti-government protests sweeping Iran. The protests began Thursday. Those are our major news highlights. Remember, you can hear us live on 3FM 92.7 and you can also follow our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. Up next is the big one. Welcome. Now, former President John Dramani Mahama says the NDC will not be cowed by threats of prosecuting alleged corrupt past government officials. He told hundreds of supporters at the 36th anniversary celebration of the 31st December Revolution in the Volta Regional Capital Hall that members who will be accused will have the opportunity to defend themselves. The whole anniversary was on a theme uniting around the principles of probity, accountability and social justice. It brought together many leading members of the party who undertook a two-hour health walk through the regional capital aimed at uniting and reorganizing the party. Addressing the gathering at the Mfojo Park, former President Mahama admonished the Kufu Ado government to prosecute the corrupt officials around him if he would succeed as an anti-corruption campaigner. The easiest part in the fight against corruption is prosecuting your political opponents. The true test in the fight against corruption is holding your own people accountable when they go wrong. We must not pursue post-regime accountability. We must pursue accountability even as a regime exists. He challenged President Ekufo Ado to let the sword of justice cut both ways in his attempt to drain the country of corruption. It's our hope that the knife will cut both ways, and that even as you are pursuing your political opponents, you are also pursuing members of your government who are proven to be corrupt. General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson Esidu Ngetia, described the June 4 and December 31 revolution as national days that must be observed as such. Because June 4 and 31st revolution did something that affects the governance of this country. We have all benefited from what June 4th and 31st December Revolution stood and still stand for. Founder of the NDC and former president Jerry John Rawlings lambasted the rise in reckless vigilantism, which he termed as breeding a new standard in lawlessness. I have on a number of occasions made remarks about the current president. That notwithstanding, I have to caution that the rise of reckless vigilantism, which is breeding a new standard in lawlessness, has to be brought to book. Vigilantism perceived to be protected by political authority is a one-way road to break down law and order. 
Former President Rawlings also condemned the reported number of corrupt practices in the present government, including the recent cash for dinner seats and the 800,000 website budget allocation for the Special Initiative Ministry. One cannot also overlook reports of official indiscretion in the cash for dinner seats affair. I expect the executive to similarly respond appropriately to the reported inflated budgetary allocations by a particular ministry, which has elicited some negative responses from the general public. Left unattended to, these acts can lead to the escalation of corruption in our country. The NDC founder also used the occasion to call on his party to resolve all differences in the interest of the future of the party. Removing the log in my eye is the only way to legitimize my right to expose the speck in another's. All right, let's get onto the telephone lines and speak with uh, uh, Dr. Justice Bali with uh, the University of Ghana Business School. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you very much. And on a day like uh, 31st December, there are many who uh, expected uh, that the former head, uh, head of state, uh, former president, John Dramani Mahama and uh, Rawlings will both uh, make comments. Do you get the sense uh, from the comments coming from both of them that they're being fair in uh, assessing this government's fight against corruption? Yeah, I, good evening to you. And um, I, I think that it was to be expected because for an opposition government uh, or opposition party, you would expect that uh, for such a platform as 31st that uh, many people will be looking up to, they would definitely have taken swipes at the current government uh, in, in many ways, including some policy initiatives that um, they, they think are not being implemented well. Uh, and, and since the fight against corruption has been a mantra uh, for the current president, you would anticipate that uh, both former presidents would say things in, in relation to that. Um, but I, 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 for maybe another discussion, we will talk about whether or not there's actually a fight. In my view, there's no fight that has ever started in Ghana uh, on corruption. And so um, if they talk about a fight against corruption, that's a, dis a different discussion we can have. But I think that the statement that came, especially the statement that came from the immediate past president, um, uh, the former president, Mahama, about um, the, the, the difficulty of dealing with uh, your own appointees if they are accused of corruption. Uh, it, it's, it's perhaps a very subtle admission of his own failures when it came to dealing with issues or some allegations of corruption against his ministers. But also, um, maybe it's a, a foretelling of what the current president is likely to have or the challenges he's like to face in, in, the, in, the, in his attempts to, to deal with corruption. And that is to be expected, because in, in Africa and many other developing countries, the biggest challenge for governments in power is to deal with their own people. And oftentimes, we have seen people who have been accused of some uh, forms of corruption being shielded by the government or their government and stuff like that. For me, the most important part of the discussion uh, should also focus on whether or not uh, the, the statement he made about, you know, focusing on the past government and whether or not, as a people, that's what we should be doing. I think that Ghanaians will not um, forgive the current president or the current government if people who were alleged to have um, corrupted themselves in some way are not dealt with. But it is also the case that Ghanaians have become so heightened in terms of their, their attitude towards corruption. And so we would not only expect the current government to deal with corruption of the past, but we will also be looking up to see the extent to which they deal with corruption of people who are in their government and who are alleged to have corrupted themselves in some ways. So, so I think that um, his comment was, was, was a good comment, and I think we should discuss it. We should put pressure on the current government to prosecute people who in the past have been accused, uh, if there is evidence. And, but also that if in the current government there are people who are um, misappropriating state resources, 
they have to be dealt with. Mm. Uh, Prof, uh, let me go back to uh, what you just said. Uh, the fact that uh, the former president was calling on the current government to also hold uh, present uh, officials accountable with the happenings in the current government on corruption. Uh, do, you, do you think that we are going to see present officials going to court, for example, if they happen to uh, have been mentioned in some corruption scandals? Well, I, I, if I look at the president's posture, um, I, I had a lot of confidence initially. Uh, with time, I am not sure whether I will be able to still hold my chest out and say the president will do that. But I should be honest with you, and, and to perhaps go along with the former president's comment, it's very difficult dealing with your own appointees. But that, was, that will be the measure of the extent of strength that our president will will be, uh, will be uh, assessed to have or not to have. And so we would want to see what happens. What I think we should be doing as a people, um, citizens, because the president calls us to be, to be citizens and not spectators, is to force the current president or the current government to deal with corruption even if it is in their government now. And so we will not be, and I have said that nobody should think that any individual is righteous. Every individual has some tendencies of corruption. And if measures are not put in place to prevent people from being corrupt, everyone can be corrupt. And so if there are people in government now and there's no evidence or there is no signal that if you misbehave, you can get punished, people will go ahead and do it. And those of us who are sitting on the fence or those of us citizens, uh, we have to make sure we put so much pressure. Civil so society, the media, let's put pressure. And if we put pressure, I think that the president will be under uh, some force to act. And I would expect that the president will act if the evidence is brought to bear uh, uh, on the issues that will, be, will, will come up. Prof, so you, yes. ra yeah. Yeah. Prof you raised uh, issues with uh, the fight against corruption, especially looking at how the past government under Mahama handled or tackled corruption uh, compared to how this current government is also approaching it. I know both of them put in place some forms of systems to check corruption, but uh, what is the missing link here? I mean, as a country, what are we not getting right? Well, I, I, I don't think that my assessment of the Ghanaian political space is that there hasn't at all. So as for a fight, we probably have put systems in place we, we are very uh, comfortable with adding on rules and regulations and systems and, and structures and all of that. Unfortunately, in a system like ours, those don't fight, um, those don't fight corruption. What fights corruption is strong leadership that will show a clear signal that people can get a bite if they put their hand in the kitty. Now, on, until maybe one day that will show, but otherwise I haven't seen that. The former president actually, if you like, romance people who were alleged to have misbehaved. I am not sure whether we are seeing anything now yet. Uh, maybe it's too early to call, but um, there have been a few cases that have come up, and you would anticipate that uh, we would, they will be dealt with in the ways that will give some credence. Right. Even, if in the, even if in the very minutest sense, we get a sense that the president is not using systems to whitewash investigations and say, oh, everything that comes so far, oh, it's, it's, uh, there's no corruption, there's declared, Shiraj has cleared, uh, investigation has cleared, and, and when those things begin to happen, then you want to ask the question whether or not we have some seriousness to this, this thing called the fight against corruption. But in my view, we haven't had any uh, fight yet. What right. is the problem you ask? What are we not doing right? The Ghanaian citizens it's the problem. The Ghanaians, you and I, are the problem. We are the ones that condone it. We are the ones that support it. We are the ones that do it. We are the ones that will go on demonstrations to support corrupt officials. So we are the problem. If we change, the, the Ghanaian public official will be forced to change. Right. Uh, Prof, we're grateful for our time. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Justice Barley. There. This is News at 10. You can follow our live stream on Facebook and you can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back with more news.
Welcome back. Now, the transition to ushering the new year 2018 was watched by many, including vigils by the Christian community at various watch night services in various churches. For many, it was a holy occasion to renew relationship with Jesus Christ and also revise resolutions to face the challenges of the new year. As early as 8 p.m., some church halls were already full to capacity with members desirous of seeing off a historic year and welcome another. This was the scene at the House of Liberty International Ministry, Teshi in Accra. The atmosphere was the same at the World Evangelism Ministry, also at Teshi. At the Cedar Mountain Chapel Assemblies of God at East Legon, the lead pastor, Reverend Stephen Wingham, advised all Christians to make prayer key in all the activities to gain the power of God this year. Anytime anybody carry power, the person fasted. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. You watch Christians who fear fasting, Christians who, who abhor prayer, they are powerless. I said even mosquitoes are more powerful than them. The auditorium of the Maranatha Revival Chapel of the Assemblies of God at Middle East Shaman was filled to capacity. Members rejoiced and thanked God for bringing them to the end of the year. Senior Pastor Reverend Samuel Marod Aqua, using the biblical analogy of Jacob crossing the Jordan to serve Laban, said God will prosper his people as they cross over into the new year. God will bring a multiplication of everything that you have started doing. God will not want you to stagnate in the coming year. God is going to make somebody abundantly wealthy and rich and prosperous because he God Meanwhile, at some Orthodox churches like Christ the King Sebrepo, this was an opportunity for them to show appreciation to God for seeing them through for the past 25 years since the establishment of the branch. The service was on the theme, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Christ the King congregation now say it. The pastor said, the Ghanaian's ability to someone's problems is key to development. Right, let's get on to the telephone line now. Uh, we have Reverend Samuel uh, Marold Aqua of the Maranatha Revival Chapel Assemblies of God uh, 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 Middle East in a shaman branch uh, joining us. Uh, good evening, sir, and thank you very much. Good On evening. New Year's thank Day, uh, we do really see people put what is uh, uh, preached in churches into practice. Uh, we don't see that because a lot of people were in church December 31st night, including those of those who have been absent for from church throughout the year, where they find themselves in, in church. Does it really matter whether or not uh, you show up on 31st? Uh, does it automatically mean you're going to have a good year? Um, the showing up on that day in question is the beginner point. So when the word of God is preached, he expect to do a follow-up on the person. Because this is a, a discipleship process. We will not just preach one and we end, but we want that we continue teaching, and then we want to also evaluate to see whether what we have taught is being implemented or is happening in the life of that individual. So, so this, is an, this is an evaluation exercise for the pastors also? I mean, because I have noticed... It, 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 um, for me as a pastor, uh, I have elders above me or the uh, Assemblies of God hierarchy above me. So they evaluate me every year. All right? 
And then me, as I work with church members also, I should do evaluation concerning the growth of that individual because I'm impacting into his or her life. Mm. I know that the, 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 the message of Christ, uh, mainly salvation, has over the years been adulterated. I mean, I heard you uh, in that interview with us uh, talking about uh, the fact that you, your wish for your members will be to prosper in the new year and all of that. Uh, the prosperity message appears to be overshadowing the, the, the salvation message of Christ. Are we not being excessively uh, dependent on the prosperity message, uh, you know, ignoring the key essence of Christianity, which is salvation? Um, it, it's the blessed the two. Prosperity is linked in the salvation message. But the primary thing is Matthew chapter 6, chapter 3. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. So we do the preaching of the gospel, the kingdom of God as the basic thing, and then we educate also that out of self God faithfully making his kingdom the priority, he intends bless us to be successful in whatever do. So in reality, uh, Christianity uh, must go alongside prosperity. Is that what you're saying? Because uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added unto you. Uh, yes. Those things should necessarily be prosperity? Prosperity is in the message of the salvation we're talking about. We cannot take the God out of the context that if you follow God honestly, sincerely, and faithfully, God also blesses and adds to your life. He doesn't make your life just a single life. God brings increase to your life because at the end of the day, you see that Abraham walked with God and God blessed him. I walked with God and God blessed him. I, Jacob walked with God God blessed him. So anybody who works with God faithfully, sincerely, and with a primary goal in his heart that should, 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 be, God should be rewarded God with prosperity. Is that it? What do you mean? I'm saying that everyone who walks with God, like you're saying, should be rewarded with prosperity. Is that the message? Yes, that is the message. But is everybody that a... Is, who is, is, faithfully, honestly, sincerely, God... At the end of the day, God will make himself manifest. Interesting. Uh, so uh, let, let's just hold on to that, uh, the manifestation of God being prosperity and all. Do we really see the impact of these preachings on members, considering that uh, the spate of corruption in our country has been endemic uh, lately in society, and majority of these people are in churches? Mm. The conclusion, I don't want you to do that um, what is happening, I have my understanding. And then as I walk with God, my commitment to God teaches me that corruption should not be part of my language or part of my life. So as much as I am, I walk honestly and faithfully with the tenets of Scripture guiding so that corruption is not found in the way I handle the God. Other places you will find it and it looks like there is nothing wrong. But that should not be it. We should make sure the Church of Jesus Christ stands distinct. Any individual in the Church of Jesus Christ should stand out if he is doing his business, he should do it with clean hands. If he's doing his business, he should do it with clean heart. If he is doing whatever he does as a church member, he should know that should be a reflection of fear in what he or she is doing. Right, uh, Reverend, thank you very much. Uh, before we go, really, um, I know that uh, the, the year has started. Uh, 
And there are yeah. quite a number of people who have expectations of of Christ and also uh, like you were saying uh, as they diligently follow Christ they should expect to be prosperous. What will be your message to Ghanaians generally as we enter the new year and the years beyond? Yes, my, my, um, uh, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters what? The primary thing that I expect everything not a mouth Christian <laughs> But a committed, hard Christian is that. Walk with the Lord in the fear of God. Right. So that this year be a guide or a check for you as an individual. So if I, I walk with God, I analyze my life with fear of God and with the scriptures checking my life. So that at the end of the day, or from January to December, at my life, I will see that the word of God has impacted my life right. and how God wants me to walk. I have done the same. Right. So each thing, as you walk with God through this year, make sure that the fear of God should be your guide right. uh, as Reverend you go through the year. Thank you very much and God bless you. Reverend Akwa, God bless you too. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Samuel Akwa uh, there with Assemblies of God. And that's how we wrap up with uh, News at 10. I'm Stephen N.T. On behalf of the crew here, uh, good night and Happy New Year to all our cherished viewers around the globe and the country beyond. Thank you for staying with us. There's more news at 3news.com. Good night.